Welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. We're in a little bit of a different set this evening and we're not live, um, but we are going to be watched, I guess, an hour after our show because the Appropriations Committee is meeting in our normal space. So I'm Margie Wigan, my co-host. I'm Lisa Jackson. Yep. And tonight we have three segments. We're going to start with Chris Waldman, who's going to talk to us about why the HCA would like an LED sign in front. And then we're going to talk with Denise Hildreth McBride, McBride Hildreth, excuse me, about um, the potential of retail recreational marijuana being in town and why she's got some points opposed. And we have some other people that put some uh, suggestions in about why it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And then the third segment is going to be about marathoners. Why do they run and how do they train? Yeah. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> So tell us why you think you need a, an LED sign, what's good about that, and why should we have one? Um, well, really, uh, it was a fortuitous accident. Um, I have been trying to figure out a way for us to be able to advertise all of the many things that we yeah. do at HCA. And, you know, many times we'll have more than one thing running mm -hmm. concurrently or things mm -hmm. running successively. And it's simply impossible to get the word out frequently enough so that people know what's going on. Um, I mean, the sandwich boards are blowing down in the wind. Yeah. And, you know, they can only be They're so They're hard useful. to read, too. I mean, when, right. you, when you go by it, you know, it's hard to read them. And yeah. it's hard to kind of distinguish. I mean, it's just, I think... Because it's lower, right? You know, and the positioning of it, sandwich boards are a little yeah. Tough. And by town law, we can only have one out at a time, and right. that doesn't oh. suffice. So that so uh, my understanding of town bylaws is that you can't have. Is that why are you looking for a variance? Because you can't um, have the LEDs in the back. Yeah, right. I'm yeah. looking for a special permit. And yeah. the way this came about was, I I thought that perhaps a digital sign could be the answer mm -hmm. to our letting the public know what's going on right. and I understood that I would need to go before the the town and get a special uh, permit so I started to investigate possibilities so I could show them what it might look like and as I did that I came across this sign at the Clark Institute and um, I called to ask how did you do it who made it for you how much did it cost and I was given the name of the company and told that the sign cost a quarter of a million dollars. <gasps> what? Ouch. Well, first yeah. of all, so let's, let's back up to how big a sign are you envisioning? Would it be the similar sign to the size of the signboard? Initially, I imagined um, yeah. the size of the board the that is there now, board. which is nine. The oh, I'm board. sorry, not the sandwich board. The, the, the event standing sign one. that we oh, have gotcha. now. Right. Yep. That is nine and a half feet high. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that that's a quarter of a million dollars this that size so this is a little bit taller than that okay <laughs> it's it's uh, 12 and a half feet Wow um, but because in our conversation when as I was asking the questions uh, it came about that the clerk was willing to donate the sign to us mm-hmm I thought oh. What wow. a phenomenal opportunity. Yeah, um, exactly. It's not something we could afford. Right. And um, not exactly what I would have chosen, but um, for a nationally recognized museum to offer us this kind gift. Wow. Yeah. Created for a museum. Perfect. I thought the design works right. really well for us. And um, for free, sounded pretty good. Right. Well, Beautiful. that's kind of the future, too. I mean, if you think about it, where you, I mean, I was just looking at your website today, and you have so many events coming up, mm. and it would be near impossible to have that on your sandwich board or on, you yeah, know, like on a online. paper board. Yeah, it's just online. Yeah. But it'd be neat to have kind of a banner running, mm -hmm. or is that what well, you're Well, a banner, a running banner might distract traffic, though, because yeah, yeah. you're trying we to read the banner that. while you're driving. That wouldn't be such right. a good plan. So Kathy says... So we had a call come in. Kathy says the signs are a good idea so you can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the current ones are a little tacky. Thank you for your opinion, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> I like the honesty. Um, and Fair so what, what you're yeah. talking yeah. about sounds like it's a museum quality or a more refined yes. uh, looking thing, mm -hmm. you know, than what you might see on the highway that says, you know, click it or ticket or whatever the, you know, whatever those LED signs are. It's not going to be like that. Right. Right. 
Yes. So maybe people have that image in their head because that's the LED signboard that they have seen previously. So yeah. do you have a picture of the wh yeah, what I'm you're talking about? I do. So here's a mock-up of uh, what we imagine the sign can look like. And I think if the content is designed well, mm -hmm. um, it, can, it can be very elegant and subtle and not blaring bright right. in your face in your face sign and are there different color choices for the bulbs for the LED bulbs or are they all standard white color so or is the, the background black or well I, I designed the background as black yeah so that it, it wouldn't be stands out bright yeah and it can be designed any way mm -hmm. we need it oh so like here's an example of oh my that goodness so nice. to yeah. that's that's classy. Yeah, it is. That's modern. <laughs> it's classy. It's easy to read, yeah. not distracting. And it's nice. You can actually put an image of a oh, person. Oh, it's beautiful. Or yes. Beautiful. Or Do you want to? Should we hold that up for longer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and you know, I, we recognize that um, this is a, a a big thing to ask the neighbors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who I would imagine don't want. This big, huge have you gotten song. any feedback from um, the neighbors? I have talked to some, yeah. and uh, people have actually been positive right. because they want to know what's going on. Yeah, and they were worried about the brightness at night, but yeah. they were relieved when I told them that we can turn it off. Right, we can program it. Hey, well, I was just going to say, if it's on a timer, yeah. you could turn it off at ten o'clock, eleven, whenever it seemed Even appropriate earlier, yeah. Yeah. for for people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I know um, that. Where in my old house, the church across the street, Faith Church, was building and was renovating. They had spotlights on that oh, I from didn't. From your house, you would yes. see it. Yeah. So I, I wasn't aware <laughs> of the spotlights, you know, because they hadn't. They started the renovations and then the spotlights. And I was, what was happening? Yeah, you yeah. know, and I called over and said, um, "Are they on all night, all the time?" Because they were on all night, yeah. so then they they did they did adjust that because they didn't realize that it was shining right in my south facing bedroom window. Yeah, um, we're trying to be very really sensitive. Exactly, to that, I love that. Try yeah. to design it. And That's good. Key. You've gotten good feedback because I know um, when we did the center trail, we talked to all the abutters, and I think mm -hmm. that information and not like like Margie was saying, all of a sudden it's there. Mm -hmm. I think having that discussion with the neighbors and the abutters and saying this is this is what we're planning. What is your yeah. opinion on it? And I think. Right. It's very useful when you go before whichever board you need to go for mm -hmm. to get the approval. Yeah. It's also respectful. You want it to is, make sure yes. that you're starting out with a good tone for the people that are going to be m most affected, you know, all the time, right. yes. as opposed to yeah. the I driver's by. people's concerns Of course, are. of right. course. Yeah. Do you have outside spotlights at HCA just to light up the building? at all? No, not okay. to light up the So then that's even more respectful. I did look up um, common problems with neon fluorescent and LED lighted signs because I don't really know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, fluorescent light, but so you have LED. So what they talked about was they offer an average of 100 kilowatt hours, which is more than 11 hours of 24 hours a day usage, which you wouldn't be doing. It gives the very longest life when it comes to lighted signs, mm -hmm. as opposed to a fluorescent or um, fluorescent or neon. And all I can think of with neon is that buzzing noise. It's yeah. all the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, so the, so it seems to be encouraging in terms of the LED being the best, longest life when it comes to lighted signs. It's rare that one or an LED string will go out. Wow. Right. Um, however, the power supply could fail. Um, so operating and maintenance costs of other options, LEDs, you're going to save the most amount of money and save a lot of headaches. So this is very positive. Um, looking at sign options, least expensive options for LED, but the top systems are the best options to make sure your sign is lasting a long time. They may be less expensive at first. The off brands can create results that are less than stellar. Um, <laughs> So, but one of the ways people are going to know your business is that there is a lighted sign. So, you know, so this this seems to be very pro yeah. sign um, and, and seems to encourage the LED option rather than fluorescent or neon. So is Clark also paying for their donating the sign? Will they be paying for the installation and all of that as well? We do need to take care of yeah. that. But they did give us a computer and the software that we oh, need to wow. run. 
run this. So you can so create, generous. you can do the art for it yes. in, on the computer and then just, right. oh, that's so yeah. exciting. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And for the cost that we spend creating the sandwich board materials yes. or time. the other signs we do, it's time and it's the money to get it printed, yes. this will end up costing less. Yeah. In the long haul. And I also have to say that in terms of ecology and recycle, reuse, you're not creating any waste. Right. It's all, you know, so you don't have to take down the sign right. and throw away that paper and you don't have to, you can just get the artwork from the artist and then put yep. that through the computer. That's amazing. What a really cool thing. So how did this come upon you that Clark wanted to donate it to to the Huffington Arts? How did they, did you, you ask them you about that? You reached out to them probably. And then they. Just to ask questions, yes. Yeah, and then and they um, came back with, have you had a relation? I'm just curious because that's such a wonderful donation. Um, you know, like they were supporting the arts, but I was wondering if there was a background story to it or um, something, or they, you know, been to our art center and have seen it and seen how wonderful it is, or... Mm, no, um, I had been to the Clark several times yes. and expressed my enthusiasm for the museum, yeah. and we got to talking about, you know, art stuff, and uh, he he was just so thrilled to be able to pass this on to a nonprofit. Like yes, us. it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So this is an existing sign they have, and they are updating their sign. Is that so? They their new director um, yeah. elected to put in a different sign. Ah. so they wanted to perfect. Interesting. Get this one off. Recycle, the reuse. <laughs> yeah, it's called really good timing. Yes, well, <laughs> very good that, timing. Yeah. Speaking of that, he said, um, "Actually, we're taking it down. It might already be down. Let me go check." And <laughs> he hung up the phone called me half an hour later and said they were about to take it down this afternoon i have stopped them oh. and so let me know if you want this sign wow that is so awesome. it was perfect it was the day it, it was, was like it was meant to happen i was going to say That's it sounds so like awesome. it was meant to be so what is your process now in, in putting it before the planning which board the planning, planning board, board yes okay so and um because i was at a planning board meeting where they were talking about installing the signs on the old high school that involved poles that had to go into the concrete and the brick and the thing and how where do we put it and what kind of lighting i mean what kind of lettering mm -hmm. you know because they wanted to preserve the the integrity of the structure mm -hmm. and it was a huge discussion mm -hmm. um but it didn't seem to me that to be that complicated so i'm, I'm hoping that it's You'll not contentious. It doesn't seem yeah. to be, because um, you're not installing it in any building. You're, it's freestanding. It's being donated to you. It's a beautiful. Right. Very classy. Very Addition to, yeah. Yeah. It, it is um, outside of the bylaws, so that is something that we need to address. Mm -hmm. And mm. I understand the concern around that. So right now we're just taking the time to talk with people and yeah. uh, understand their concerns and address them as best we can. Right. And and these would be planning board people or just people in the neighborhood or in the neighborhood. To whom? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what have you what are the what's the what are the concerns? Do they do the, is there a, is there a general concern is it appearance or lighting on that night or um, lighting at night seems yeah. to be the biggest concern. Which but is easily address yeah, addressed. Yeah, easily yeah. addressed. Yeah. Uh, have you thought about if they are very pro sign, come ha bringing them into the meeting with you, the planning board meeting, because that's something I actually did with the trails club, uh -huh. is when I had um, people that were interested in the center trail that were abutters, mm -hmm. they spoke about it at town meeting and things like that. So mm -hmm. it might, I don't know, if just making a soft suggestion that sure. might be a way to yeah. kind of get you know, just because that's the questions the planning board will yeah. be asking you and say, well, what's the feedback you've gotten? Yeah. But if you actually have someone there that yes. isn't a butter. And I understand the height is, is a, um, a concern for some people. Um, I, I have shown it uh, here in right. as much as I could in the to, context. So to I give think the size. Yeah. So it's what, a 12 foot high. Yeah, for, for and the elements around it. Sure. Um, and that big tree's there. It, it, it works well in the environment. Yeah, yeah. and the garage would be, it's the, the garage is higher. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the building is a two-story building. Mm -hmm. So it's not overwhelming anything in that area mm -hmm. in terms of. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, it's only a foot deep. Oh, okay. Oh, and wow. only five feet wide. Mm -hmm. So I think also its verticality right. makes it 
um, appear less massive well, than a sign might. Well, that image for that, from that picture, it doesn't even look, you know, when you think of 12 feet, you're like, wow, 12 feet's really tall, but that image, it doesn't look invasive, mm -hmm. you know, which is nice. And the other thing, given that it's an art center, mm -hmm. it's almost like a work of art itself, like an obelisk mm -hmm. or... Um, 2001 a space odyssey didn't they have that slab them but uh, so <laughs> i think it's so like the you know Korova with that big yes, tall sculpture exactly you know? exactly it's like a the modern sculpture. art modern yeah. piece of modern digital sculpture yeah so <laughs> so it's more fitting perhaps to have it at an art center oh, yes. than it might be to have it at cvs or to have it at right, <laughs> right. you know what i'm saying so i think i think you have many many possible attributes angles yeah. you know from which to present and persuade when I think that shows kind of a, a professional beautiful sign like that yeah. shows the professionalism and the the quality of the cultural art center as well because it's had you know a sign like that exactly. would really add Upgrades. to add to you know the whole persona or the whole image of your organization yeah yeah well I I think it would be really useful in letting folks know about all the things that are going on yeah. there. You know, since the 2015 expansion, um, our events and performances have quadrupled. Right. Um, we have over 150 concerts, dance performances, events, and many of them are free, by right. the way, to the public. Um, so we want to get the word out. Right, and, and have people use this wonderful resource that mm -hmm. we have in our community. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that the sign seems like a really nice way to do that. Right, I, because that's really the only way some people are going to know right. if they don't take the time to go online or right. whatever. And so. not everyone is online. That's right. true, that's and, true. Le and fewer people now that the, the data breach happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, so are there any, we're almost done with this segment. Yeah. Is it, I know it was fast because we have so much fun here. Is there anything? <laughs> <laughs> is there is there anything you wanted to add um, in terms of why you think it's such a great thing, or why you thought of it, and and how is it a benefit? You've already said it, but I don't know if you want to recap. Um, yeah, the the feedback that we often get from people is that they they don't know everything that's going on at the center. Yeah. And we're always astounded because of the amount of outreach that we do. Right, right. But it's, it's impossible for any of us to keep up with right. everything that's going on these days. So yeah. I certainly understand that. Um, so it seems like a, an, an unintrusive way of getting the word out to people. Um, that doesn't require any kind of cell phone or yeah. computer or you know keeping up with or the distracted daily paper. driving <laughs> yeah yeah and and would I another question just occurred to me would that sign be uh, static or would that be changing would you show one thing that's coming up and then show another thing that's coming up mm -hmm. and show another thing that's coming up would you change that's the idea, but yeah. do it in in very uh, gradual. slower, very gradually, like right. every ten minutes. So right. it's never an instance wow. where when someone's walking by, something yeah, of is course, moving. right, great. right, right. Yeah, that's amazing because then it's all up there. Yeah. All yeah. right. So well, thank I would you just so encourage much. people to yeah. uh, contact me right yeah. at the center. Okay. And how do they contact you? Uh, they can call me at five zero eight four three five nine two 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 okay or email me at chris that's k-r-i-s at hop arts with an s center dot org and let me know what you're thinking okay thank you so thank much for you. your time thank and this you so great much. idea yeah. thank you all right thank we'll you. be back with denise mcbride hildreth to talk about marijuana in hopkinton is it a good or a bad idea this week on wake up and smell the poetry Poets, storytellers, and musicians perform and share their original works. Recycling the radiant of a wooden floor. The closed windows shuts out the air and noise from the street below. Sunlight seeps through glass and grill work, glowing like lacquer on their backs. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. 
When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Welcome back to the Margie and Lisa show, and we are very fortunate to have with us this segment, Denise McBride Hildreth, who is our Youth Services Director, and she's gonna talk with us about um, something that's on the warrant. Uh, I'm just gonna read the warrant, which mm -hmm. says, um, article on marijuana prohibition. Did you write this? Is your did you write this? Okay, so the general this is bylaw. The mm -hmm. general bylaw um, sponsor Hopkinton Youth and Family Services to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 58 Alcoholic Beverages, Marijuana, or Tetrahydrocannabinol and Tobacco of the general bylaws by adding new Section 58-5 Marijuana not medically prescribed as follows. Um, blah blah all types of quote marijuana establishments as defined in blah blah and as may otherwise be defined at okay to include without limitation marijuana cultivars craft marijuana cooperatives marijuana product manufacturers marijuana retailers independent testing laboratories marijuana research facilities marijuana transporters and any other type of licensed marijuana related businesses by whatever name used shall be prohibited within the town of Hopkinton provided however that this prohibition shall not be construed to affect the medical use of marijuana as expressly authorized by the provisions of Chapter 369 of the Acts of 2012, and um, etc. So, so everything related to marijuana except medicinal use, correct? Which we understand some people need, and um, and we yeah. We're talking so, about recreational marijuana, mm -hmm. right? right which is the law of the land in the state. So it wouldn't change that recreational marijuana is legal for people over 21. What we're talking about at town meeting is really about whether we're going to have pot shops and cultivation sites here in town. Mm -hmm. So a number of towns around us um, have gone forward with opt-out articles. And so mm -hmm. that's essentially what we're doing. Okay. Some of the towns around us, mm -hmm. Westboro, Concord is actually considering their, their opt-out tonight. Um, Medfield, so other towns around us have considered... And across the Commonwealth, correct. I, mean, I should say. Across, and the country. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So while recreational marijuana is legal for people over the age of 21 in the state, Hopkinton, as a town, did vote against recreational marijuana. So because of that, um, all towns have the opportunity to opt out. Because we voted against, all of that decision making happens for us at town meetings. So for some places that voted yes mm -hmm. on recreational marijuana, they have a two part process where it's a town meeting decision making process as well as a vote a ballot. by ballot. Mm -hmm. But here, everything's gonna happen at town meetings. So the first thing I'd like for people to know is to come to town meeting Absolutely. and to at least participate in the conversation, right. weigh in on you know, whatever their opinions might be and for us to get a good robust turnout for people to make this decision on behalf of the town. So let's add, town meeting is May 7th? 7th and probably and 8th. 8th. Yes. Mm -hmm. 7th and 8th at the middle school. Hopefully not 9th. Yes. Right? <laughs> right. right. Uh, so okay. that's really yeah. important because mm -hmm. I know for people who haven't come or don't or sure. are new in town um, and they have to access it, it's at the rear of the middle school, yeah. the entrance. Right. Um, no, side. Side. So yeah. um, the behind towers. the water tank, the big right. black water tower, that's where you yep. go in the, the large parking, parking lot. lot. Right. Yep. Right. So, and the format of, of town meeting mm -hmm. is that anyone can go to the microphone mm -hmm. when it's the public comment section, mm -hmm. ask a question, have to go through the moderator, mm -hmm. you know, to, to ask someone on the on the um, stage. But because it's our form of government, mm -hmm. we all participate. Um, Correct. Yeah, so get to town meeting, May right. 7th Very and important. 8th. So tell us, I, I read your article, which sure. was great, and I really, quite frankly, agreed with most of what you said, which is, you know, but I, real quick, um, mm -hmm. just tell us why you started this. Obviously, um, maybe give us some background on what you, you're from the Youth Commission, correct? I'm no. the Director of Youth and Family Services. Yeah, Youth yes. and Family Services. So yeah. so just give us a little bit of a background sure. how how this started for you and why you felt so strongly about bringing forward this war sure. article. Sure. Um, 
So as you might be able to predict, um, as a lifelong social worker working with yes. youth and families and the person um, who's charged with, along with a part-time social worker, Colleen Souza in the department, working with families around a variety of issues. So families come to Youth and Family Services for, for all kinds of things. Yeah. But oftentimes that involves substance use. Sure. Um, and so from the perspective of wondering how this might impact youth and families, there's no data to suggest that having marijuana shops and cultivation sites um, enhances wellness for communities. So that's, that's the first question that I ask is, yeah. whatever, no, whatever yeah. decisions we make about what we do in our town, right. how can we describe those benefits? And how can we in good conscience make decisions to have those things enter? Um, right. What is the data behind how this will enhance community and family life? So that's right. the first question I ask. There's no data to suggest anywhere that this would enhance community and family life. So I start kind of there. That's the first gut Perfect. check. Um, beyond that, you know, the way in which I see this impacting youth and families is um, the normalization of substance use in communities certainly impacts youth use. So some yes. people have said, well, we're talking about people over 21, but the perception among youth when marijuana shops and other establishments are in town is that it's normal, it's not harmful, right. it's okay, legal. Right. it's legal, yeah. right? And so we already have a bit of a battle with youth in town that we see through our office who say, you know, I have a lot of kids who come in and say, you know, Denise, it's no big deal, it doesn't really hurt me. And I point back to, you know, we do have data to suggest that yeah. if you use substances yeah. as a teenager, yeah. as a kid, yeah. um, under the age of 20, 25, really, really? under the age of yeah. 25, um, that it does have a harmful, harmful yeah. impact. So we really want to deter kids from thinking that this is something that they should be doing. And we know that the normalization has increased use in other states where mm -hmm. uh, legalization has taken place. So I think we can anticipate that that would happen here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of the rationale behind it. We yeah. also belong, Colleen and I both belong to a regional um, collaborative of other preventionists mm -hmm. and folks who run coalitions and youth and family services uh, yeah. folks. And sort of it's the collective opinion of all of us. It's not right. sort of a Hopkinton Youth and Families. Yeah. I, I don't know of another youth and family services director who would say, you know, right. pot shops Let's should come here, right. this is fine. Right. And in exactly. public health, I'm in public health coalitions sure. in the same circles. That's the discussion we've been having mm -hmm. since the ballot question passed mm -hmm. the state. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and what you say, what is the benefit? You right. know, and then, then we're stuck. If it does come in our, our town, how do we regulate it? How do we right. make sure that, you know, yeah. that it is serving our community yeah, if you the open that, If to. you open that door, yeah. then all kinds of other things come sure. in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is. And there's a cost to community to Oh, to that's well, and, and, as well. and in many ways. It's a cost of community. Yeah. Um, and we're in when, the midst of a budget crunch. We're being asked to sort of, you know, level fund, not add to expenses, um, yeah. you know, from the perspective of the, the fire chief, the police sure. chief, yeah. chief, both are in agreement that yeah. this is not something that we want. Um, the Board of Selectmen voted unanimously to support yep. the opt-out. The youth, youth Commission last night voted unanimously to support the opt-out. Excellent. Um, so other youth-serving folks and community-minded folks who, who work on behalf of our citizens right. are yeah. feeling like this would really stretch resources, not be a value right. added, and could potentially have some bad ramifications. Well, that's so scary because even in my coalition meetings, they bring in what it looks like. It looks like gummy candy. Mm -hmm. It looks, and I had no idea. That well, that there are many in. forms of it. Right. That's just one form. But it, but it's almost like it seems like it's marketed to kids. I mean, well, like, that is. Yeah, and and that's that's a scary thing. But to to play devil's advocate, so sure. like how did so we bring this to our community, and they said, well, at least if it's in our community, we can control it. Mm -hmm. It, but they'll go to the next community over and buy it. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? So, um, you know, the argument that, well, they can just get it somewhere else, so why shouldn't yeah. we just have it here? Um, you know, I think that really changes the culture of Hopkinton if we have it I here. Agree, I think yeah. we have to really think about what has our community kind of always been about. What is it that we are trying to really establish as our community values? Yeah. Um, someone that I was speaking with today said, you know, do we as a community want to be known as a place that has really good pot shops? There are lots <laughs> oh of gosh. ways that we want to be known. Um, right. We would have to decide if that's one of the things we want to be known for. Right. So is that at the, I know there was a, something this morning at St. John the Evangelist mm -hmm. Church. Yep. Um, that Colleen sent out, um, and I someone gave it to me at my church, at Faith Church, sure. um, a coffee this morning to to um, just have people d gather and answer questions. Did you have a good turnout, or we had about ten not? people, which okay. was a, which well, felt like which felt like a good turnout, and it yeah. really was an opportunity to talk with people about um, why an opt-out makes sense from our right. perspective, why they should vote yes to opt-out, so that's a little bit of a complicated way of mm -hmm. languaging it. Um, and for people to sort of say, well, well, what if this question comes up? What if that question's come right. up? So it was a good opportunity for us to hear 
some right. of the other sides of things that my people might mention. So I have um, Stephen likes our Facebook video. Thanks, Stephen, because we Thanks. are live streamed on Facebook. Okay. We are live on Facebook. Um, and um, I have to say I, I had some feedback um, on email, and we have Jane here saying, but we normalize the use of alcohol. Mm -hmm. This yes. is just the other point of view. Sure. So is there a plan to address that as an issue as well? I believe we are addressing that mm -hmm. issue in town. And all of us. And certainly reason. alcohol abuse is an issue, and we do. We do. She's yeah, right. People don't, people yeah. don't hear all of that that I know you've done such no and she, she is absolutely right and yeah. and certainly to to sort of put forth marijuana as an issue is right. not to any in any way uh, dilute the fact exactly. that <laughs> alcohol is an issue also so yeah. exactly. one of one of the big Substance concerns is um, we know that alcohol as well as marijuana are gateway drugs for many people not yeah. for everybody yeah um, so not everybody who uses marijuana certainly is going to advance to another type of drug or, or become mm -hmm. addicted to heroin and we're not trying to you know put a side-by-side -side parallel between the two right. but I believe pretty much everybody that I know of that has advanced to, to more significant forms of addiction, heroin, opioid use, yeah, will almost always say, I started with marijuana or alcohol. We yeah. had someone speak at one of our coalition meetings just this afternoon. Mm -hmm. He's the brother of someone who died from opiate addiction, from a heroin overdose. And his story it resonated for me just because I knew I was coming here. Yeah. He said, my brother started with marijuana. And he said, as soon as he started smoking, his mm -hmm. drug use advanced. Again, that's not what is going to happen with everybody, but right. it certainly happens to to some people and we need to be aware that that is a possibility well and I think it normalizes yeah. it by having it legal or you know sure. that's why alcohol doesn't seem so bad because normalized. so another well, no thing that brings brings up um, the taxes so people mm -hmm. talk about the potential tax income to sure. the community how how would you address that yeah. question that comes up yeah so that I think that's really why most people voted for it is they thought it was right. a revenue right um, driver driver for the community sure. so as I understand it the the conversation on that has shifted a little bit um, channel 5 just had a story last week where um, folks are actually saying it, it's not gonna produce that much in terms of revenue when right. you when you really think about the cost to the community the public safety yeah. public health costs etc mm -hmm. um, I, I would suggest some money's not worth taking let's right. start there so that is obviously right. my Dirty opinion and then the on movie. the other side of it um, it doesn't appear that it's going to be that much of a money maker right. it might be a slight money maker Good. or more of a wash someone had emailed me and, and yeah. Lisa's actually pulling the same points yeah. from the same email sure. yeah um, and so I was going to offer that same question I mean this is just someone who's on the other side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, qu asked the question about the state revenue mm -hmm. um, and suggested you know if we did have it it could be controlled and regulated mm -hmm. keep it away from certain areas um, you know and that that we've had difficulty with kids um, drinking too mm -hmm. much and and sure. uh, and then uh, I have an article um, today that we have ex speaker John Boehner thinking that he, or he's on marijuana firms advisory okay. board mm. former governor weld is on that board yeah. um but i think you know as you said it's available in other towns if there's someone that wants to get it but i think i think the piece is where you know our youth are the brain isn't finished forming till 25 mm -hmm. and um and then if we're we're normalizing it i think it's so normalized in the media mm -hmm. in all of the songs you yeah. know and, and the culture and, and when they look at these kids that they're kind of looking up to mm -hmm. have this whole hey it's cool and you know right. drinking has been glorified right. and so um there's it's always, a big concern. there's already a battle there and yeah. this would only increase it, the it battle. just makes another difficult sure. thing sure. so tell us more about um you have a grant Correct. from the from the state right it's an earmark yep, yeah the substance abuse prevention grant right right so this c goes under that subs substance abuse prevention grant correct or is it an offshoot of that so um, we are allowed to use that it's one hundred thousand dollars we're allowed to use that in any way that advances substance abuse prevention right. um, and so there's lots of different ways that that's being deployed um, everything from supporting activities and coordinating activities that support youth um, having other opportunities to participate in fun things that mm -hmm. don't involve substances to be speakers be free yep to speakers to something like this as an advocacy project for sure is it the mopsy grant 
No, no, oh. it's a state year market. It was actually um, specifically for you services. She for, submitted yeah, the grant. Senator. Nice. Well, it's really the work of Senator Spilka, oh, who okay. has, has been really working, yeah. and, and Carolyn yeah. Dykema, both of whom are great supporters of our town, as they are yeah, for all their constituents. Yeah, they, talked yeah. about it last um, night. they have worked really hard to help us to be able to have money to continue the work. That's yeah. excellent. I they, work under MOPSI grants. Yeah. So I was curious that. Yeah, we don't know, have a MOPSI grant. Yeah, yeah, interesting. That's good. Yeah. Oh. yeah, they just at the Board of Selectmen meeting last night, they, um, Carolyn and and Karen were both here, mm -hmm. and they that was one of the things they talked about was a yeah. $100,000 grant, and I wasn't sure if that was a new grant or if that was the grant that yeah. you've been working with. No, so it's new. So the way that things often work, it, it would have been, we probably would have gotten it much sooner, but there was a little bit of struggle mm -hmm. going on in at the government level as to what things would be funded and what wouldn't. Ultimately, mm -hmm. the grant money just became available in February. Excellent. Oh, okay. How long is the grant for? Just cycle. until June. Yeah, so because it's near oh, market, it has to be quick, spent very I work quickly. Under those so then the question <laughs> is, well, what tight. would be the most effective use of those funds? Mm -hmm. You know, given that you that you're presenting this at town meeting May seventh, then it's only until June that you sure. So we are deploying it in lots of different ways. Like I said, with um, we've recently started a regional coalition for youth. So we have Hopkinton, Ashland, Medfield, Great. a variety of um, youth from various towns coming together to really talk mm -hmm. about what is their perspective. So we're supporting that work. We're yeah. supporting um, efforts by our sports teams. We're supporting Be Free. We're supporting a variety of speakers. We have a new project with the high school um, in collaboration with Genesis Counseling so that we can offer a psychoeducational curriculum for uh, high school students students who awesome. have been caught vaping. Um, so in lieu of suspension, they're going to be undergoing um, a three-part curriculum to help them understand yeah. why vaping might not be good for their health. Right. So there's lots of different ways that we're deploying the funds. It's sort of, it's, it's a big, a big approach rather than just, just one. It's way beyond just the marijuana. Yeah. So it's way beyond. So, so can you use, um, can you use those funds in an ad campaign to, to disseminate information and just we, say We do why have some materials, awesome. yes, being, mm -hmm. being uh, right now developed. Great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because that would that would seem to me, sure. leading up to town meeting, yep. even even you know sign boards and we have some coming. And yeah. can you get the airplane with the streaming? <laughs> that might be a bit much, <laughs> but well, Mass Clearinghouse also it's a little tough to get that type of stuff because Mass Clearinghouse I'm sure you use them yeah, all sure. the time. They have a ton of stuff on substance abuse and yeah. things like yeah. that, so you don't want to yeah. like cross over. But real quick, I want to just bring up what I looked up. Um, so marijuana, I think people don't realize the actual effects of it, and mm -hmm. I know we only have a couple min a minute, um, but it's a commonly used drug over 22.2 million users each month, mm -hmm. which is high, so I think that kind of normalizes it. But mm -hmm. there's so many effects um, on the brain. They say it can cause different types of schizophrenia, psychosis, psychosis mm -hmm. things like that. So people need to be aware that sure. it's not just... You know, it's just, it's not just something Bad you're smoking. for your brain. It mm -hmm. does a lot. I actually have a friend who um, I know was smoking a lot in college, mm -hmm. and I didn't see him from when we graduated college till, had to be three years later. Mm -hmm. He had lymphoma. Mm -hmm. So any kind of smoke, I think, sure, and it was smoke. manifested mm -hmm. in his lungs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you bring that smoke in, whatever smoke it is, mm -hmm. smoke inhalation. it's going <laughs> to damage your lungs. Yeah. You know, we know this damages brain, it's distracted driving. Um, yeah. It's not cool, you know, like it looks in, like in the movies and the videos. So. Again, I go back to, is there a community benefit? Right. Thank you. If no, then we need to really consider if we do it. Right. Thank and you. it's not only not a community benefit. Right. There are negatives. It's a detriment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And if someone really needed it, unfortunately, they could go nearby. Well, sure. and that by yeah. law saves it as well. Right. Too, for um, medical use. Yeah. Med and, and right. So on that note, thank you. we thank appreciate you. your we appreciate expertise so your and your time. time. Thank you. Good luck with that. And get to town meeting May 7 and 8, middle school. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for doing the work. And with we'll be back to talk about this marathoners. This week on All About Hopkinton, Mariana introduces us to the new director of the Hopkinton Public Library, Heather Bachman. Closer to home um, and interviewed here, landed here as adult services librarian, did that for almost three years. and. Um, in the meantime, Ronak, our previous director, had retired. We'd had an interim in place, Deb Irvin, who did a fabulous job. Um, and when they opened the permanent position, I was fortunate enough to get the job. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. 
Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. This week on Hopkin and Coffee Break, the ladies sit down with Western Nurseries' Peter Mezzo. How are the PJMs coming for this spring? They are already oh, landed. We've got trees coming in, so shrubs coming in. You've got to explain what that PJM is. For those who don't know, tell us about what Peter John Mezzo stands for. It's my great grandfather's initials, and that's the plant uh, that blooms in mid to late April every year, and it's a light purple plant. It's everywhere. People right. But it's rhododendron. It's small leaf rhododendron. And we're back. And we are here to talk about marathon running. Why would someone do that? <laughs> right. And how do they train? Right. Marathon is coming up on Monday. And um, we see people running through our town all the time practicing. Yep. Uh, we, it's a very we, exciting time of year in Hawkington. Yes, the Runners Club is always running on Saturdays. Um, but we thought we would talk about this a little bit. Yes. And see, uh, see what's what. I thought it was interesting. So I did some history. Um, searching so the first marathon was in Athens Greece and it was 490 BC so that's kind of where the marathon comes from and it was approximately 25 miles and it was to announce the defeat of the Persians to some anxious Athenians yeah, so, but he didn't run. He ran yeah. because he was trying to warn his right, parents, right. and then he died. <laughs> right, exactly. So that's not. That's and just. the first running of the Boston Marathon was on April nineteenth, eighteen ninety seven, which I thought was very interesting. So, and that at that time it was a twenty four four point five mile race, and it was all male. Right, and so, they backed it up too. Yeah, up so it was interesting. So, as an athlete. I, I love to exercise. I love to train. I have no desire ever to run a marathon. Yeah. And it's the, the training. I looked up kind of what the training is. You have to do the base mileage. It's a serious commitment, 12 to 20 weeks of training. To me, that seems like, I mean, it's fine, and I see why people want to do it. I have lots of friends that are running marathons. They do it for a benefit. But um, do you want to run a marathon? No. Yeah. So I. <laughs> so I, me neither. I'm right there with you, Margie. I love yeah. to run, and, and I've had a lot of people throughout my life say, "Oh, are you a runner?" Yeah. Especially you because you have the physique for it. Yeah. But also because I have volunteered at the marathon, right. so I have a jacket. You know, so I'm walking you around. Look, yeah, I have a jacket. You got oh, the, are you running? No, I just hand out, you know, right. directions to right. <laughs> the somewhere, whatever. When you get into Boston, yeah. Uh, but I, but I love running, and I get it. Yeah. I. I Not 26 uh, miles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, as a kid, I love playing capture the flag. I love playing soccer. Right. I love, you know, r running right. was just fun. Tag. Um, so, but it never made sense to me why you would push yourself and go through all that agony just to say I did that right that just never was me yeah. but I and I have to say yeah um, there's a book by Bobby Gibb mm -hmm. who was the first woman runner right called the girl who ran yep she wrote a picture I caught book that. Yep. it's so beautiful yeah. and and I I want that book because I have a book addiction but that's another topic <laughs> and so, so you can, the way you can she think described about it yeah no, I need the right. book. so the way she described it was <laughs> she felt like she was running on the wind or something yeah. like that that the wind was carrying her that she was one with the wind or the dog in the wind it's it was it. just very poetic right. and you could just tell that her whole being that needed was, to run right and, that, and i think that's, some people that's how they are exactly. some people so many many years i've worked at the medical sweep teams at the finish line and i see what comes off of the race um the elite runners they're all legs they go trucking by you and you're like wow you know like they, and they get a blanket though they yeah, get wrapped they in. are truly meant to run like they yeah. come by you and they, it's like seamless they've just ran the 26.5 six miles and they're rolling across the finish line i'm like ah, do you need help? <laughs> you know they just go they go whipping by but then we start seeing the folks that have been running for five hours four five yeah. six seven hours Aww. and you know what and i i don't want to be gross but right. you know what at the finish line yeah people come and they have no toenails i was gonna say yeah. shredded feet yeah shredded feet i mean and we have a team of podiatrists <sighs> people are just you know they can overhydrate, which can cause a heart heart attack under hydrate which oh. they can cause a heart attack so that's a big piece of what we deal with is 
possibly overhydration, you have to give them a diuretic to draw some of the fluid off so it doesn't get around the heart. And then under obviously dehydration, you give them fluids for that. So to me, it's just, it's an amazing feat to run a marathon, but I would never, ever do it because I see, I'm like- The result of it. We, we, we drill it as a mass casualty event. This is before Boston Marathon wow. bombing and all right, that, right, but right. we we always drilled it as a mass casualty event. Because you have lots of wounded. We have giant tents. We cover a 13 block area and we scoop the people off the finish line that are dropping in between buses, throwing up, and they're like, they crash and burn and they're all covered, skidded. And I mean, it, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not pretty. So then the question. Know? So then the question. Why? So yeah, I'm so always like, why? Why? Yeah. So I asked the teacher at school. Okay, that's um, running. Carolyn Carver yep. is running from at the Elmwood School. This is her first marathon. Yeah. So I'll ask her in a week yep. if she thought it was a good idea. <laughs> um, she has been a runner her whole life. Yep. So as I have been, not seriously. Right. But a close friend was injured. And some, the Travis Roy Foundation stepped in to help her friend. Uh, so she wanted to do something in support of it's the a, Travis Roy Foundation and gratefulness. Yeah, for quadriplegics. It's her way of yep. helping. Nice. Um, and as of today, she has raised $12,526.40. On her first marathon. First marathon. That's awesome. Through a CrowdRise yep. funding yep. page. Um, and just because... She wanted to do something to help her friend yeah. and in appreciation of I what the Travis that. Roy Foundation did. So yeah. this is a mission for right. her. Right. Um, so her reason for running is raising funds. Right. I know Mary Murphy and, and Brian Herr have run yep. for um, Dana Farber. You know, yep. we have people who run for causes. Yeah, and I, she I know. She has never run a marathon before. Wow. Um, so she's been very successful in the fundraising. Yep. I'm not sure how, you know, so to her training. Yes. I That's asked I was her about her training. About I said, how are you training for that? Yeah. She said she's physically ready. Mm -hmm. She's nervous. She's prepared. She's excited right now. Yeah. Um, she started really small. Yeah. And I said, what does That's, that mean? Yeah. And she said she ran five miles in November for her long runs. Yeah. Um, Saturday was the long run. Um, and then during the week, she did shorter runs. Yep. The Travis Roy Foundation apparently is a training schedule, and they run long runs on yep. this course, the marathon yeah. course, yep. together Tuesday night and Saturday more Saturdays, even in this weather this year. Because yep. that's my question. Oh, you see him. How do you train this year when the snow is on the woods? <laughs> so, and then, she, and I said, have you done anything else? Yeah. She said she did yoga yeah, to keep to up stretch, her flexibility. Yeah. Yeah, and, and she it. runs on her own a couple of days a week. So this Travis Roy Foundation, you know, is serious yeah. about raising funds through the marathon. But then also taking care of their runners. And they take, take yeah. care of their runners. It was interesting. I read it, and, you know, being someone that likes to exercise, I was like, well, marathon plans training for doing a marathon is 12 to 20 weeks. So, like, to me, that's a pretty big commitment. And yeah. you have to have, have the time. It's time away from your family. Yeah. <clears throat> it's time that you have to allocate in your di work day because you can't just do it on the weekends. But it, it should, it said, <clears throat> they build up their weekly mileage to up to 50 miles over four months leading to race day. So the base mileage um, with the week, first week is three to five times per week. So they start building up that base mileage. And this is from this is this is a from different yeah no what's the, what's the source of this that? is rei so okay, rei okay. has it yep. and i pulled it off there and it was pretty cut and dry there yep. was all kinds of stuff right. and then the long run so do a long run every seven to ten days mm -hmm. so it's not like you're running marathons yeah. all the time yeah, yeah. so Spend, your body can out. gradually Recover. adjust to the long <laughs> distance yep and then you do intervals speed work so that yes. gets your cardio capacity yes. Yes. and then rest and recovery yep. so you know like i guess if you do train I mean, I've trained for different competitions and things like that, and I've used a certain training technique. But I, I guess, you know, it's like anything else. And if you like to run, yeah. like like you were referring to that, the woman in the book, that she flies. It's like me when I gallop on a horse. Right. I feel like I'm in heaven. People right. might be terrified, but to me it's, oh, it's I like, gliding. I like riding fast on a horse. I'm just never sure if the horse is going to stop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> some do. Some if don't. it's going to know I'm there, I'm here. Right. Stop. So it's interesting, <laughs> you know. But the marathon thing is, is, is very, and obviously to Hopkinton it's so exciting and yeah. So Celia's stepmother wants to run a marathon, and oh, Celia's cool. talking about potentially.
actually running, you know, yep. uh, they'll start with a half marathon, which is still significant right, running. Yep. But then that's on Catherine's goal list is to run the nice. marathon. I'm and like, I think a lot of people have that on and the And she loves to and run. Just, well, then, so she yeah. may have already been training for a while. Right. So, so the... Um, Hopkinton Independent Marathon Edition comes out every year. Yep. This is the 122nd running. Yep. And um, in the middle of it, I, I love looking to see what the articles are all about marathon. Yep. Um, Nancy Cavanaugh talked about the, the um, locals hosting runners. So we have yes. Lynn and Greg Culkins um, hosting runners since 2011. Um, and and they, have the, runners, they have yeah. the runners in their house. Um, runners start con contacting them. They're coming from Ireland, mm -hmm. England, Singapore, Australia, Canada. Some of them are running for qualifying times, mm -hmm. and some are running to support a charity. Yeah. So there's different um, different possibilities. They have an 85-year-old Catherine Byers, <laughs> the former mayor of Santa Cruz, California, who's been the oldest runner for the past through year, th few years. Awesome. So I'm guessing she's running yeah. to say, I did that, right? You know, at eighty-five. So sometimes it's a personal. We had a goal. we had a guy for many many years. They come over the finish line. He was eighty-seven. His last run. Wow. And, yeah, and he had done it. I think he'd done it for forty years. And he was better off than some of the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was cruising he in at that. He was cruising in at that time. That three and a half hour, four hour time, the four hour time. That's when everything gets really messy because people just can't tolerate. Yep. The time, but hosting runners. I've I done it. She, have you have, ever done? because no, we're so close no, I've hosted no. runners no and because it was I a, have kids little kids yeah and it was a blast I mean we did it before we had Celia right and it was so fun because we had people and we made a big pasta dinner we gave them beer at that time I was making homemade beer and it was just so much fun yeah they need the cars to, yeah it was. so this so then the, another person that stays with the with the Calkins uh, family is Ed Zilka Mm -hmm. Run over 20 marathons, brought friends from his running club with him to the Culkins house. He retired in 2014, but he has a big birthday coming up and hopes to run next year. How so I think it's a personal goal. Well, he said a big birthday. Oh, He's yeah. over 20, <laughs> yeah. probably turning 50. I don't right. know. Uh, or but more, that, yeah. he says the Athletes Village is very well organized, but there are lots and lots of nervous people. Yes. A big part for runners is trying to fill up and hydrate and make sure their bladder is empty. Yes. So there's a competition. <laughs> he says the race isn't the only competition. There's a competition for porta potties too. Right. And it's like that at all <laughs> marathons, not just Boston. Yeah. So this way, they have a place to stay and a, yeah. and a potty to use, I right, guess. Right. Right. Um, and then here we have some HCA runners for, you know, people running for the Hopkinson Center for the Arts. Awesome. Where Chris was um, talking about putting a sign. So we have Joy Donahue and Garish. Chirkadi, Chirkadi. Yeah. Sorry for if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Donahue, t living here for 22 years, the marathon is never just about the race. Yeah. So here's her reason for for running. Culmination of a lifetime of all my interests. Hopkinton, Boston sports, running, marketing, fundraising, helping others, setting huge stretch goals to try to attain them. Excellent. Um, she has a bib to run for Hopkinson Center for the Arts. Um, she is a Boston College alumni. She ran for the Public Library in 2017. Um, and then um, Jirish Chikadi, uh, also running for Hopkinton Center for the Arts um, charity. And he's grateful for the support. Um, talked about Boston Marathon as truly special world's oldest annual marathon. Yes. Every long distance runner's dream is to run Boston. Yep. So it is the holy grail of marathon. <laughs> You know, so it's it's really I think it's proving something to oneself right. is huge. It's a goal. It's like ca climbing Mount Washington say, or what, that. yeah, whatever. I endured that. Well, in Boston Marathon particularly is a very strenuous marathon because of the hills. Yeah. And actually, you wouldn't go think down it down for a long yeah, time. Yeah. So so the up isn't the problem; it's the going down. Yeah. So and that really trashes people's joints and feet and knees and you know it really fatigues those muscles and and takes its toll on you yeah, so yeah, yeah. a lot of the marathons are not as quite as hilly as yep. we have so we have 44 hopkinton runners awesome Thirty thousand person field did you say that it's for no the i didn't no, yep. that's a new, yeah 44 hopkinton runners eight, ranging in age from 21 to 61 yep um wide variety of experience levels fundraising um cam fairbanks who is the son of um jen fairbanks who's the Cross country coach at the high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, so twenty. He's twenty six. He's running his first Boston. 
Um, and again, you know, he just his favorite marathon-related memory remains when he spoke at Elmwood's Kenya Day as a <laughs> high school team captain. We have Kenya Day tomorrow at right. school. Right, and the Celia Kenya always love that. Yeah, Kenya runners come in. Yeah, he says I love being a part of that and everything else that's focused on the marathon. Yeah. From when I was participating in Kenya Day as an elementary student up to volunteering for the marathon senior year. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, you know, there are different reasons to And run. like I saw the other day, we have a runner from Hopkinton um, Music Association that's fundraising Great. for the music. And so it's, it's, it's a wonderful. Yeah. I mean, and, and we are being kind of snarky about not wanting to run it but no, I, I think I, it's I think it's a it's wonderful not a goal yeah, for me right yeah. not a goal for me either but yeah. it's it's just such an amazing feat and I think the energy behind it it's incredible you, you know and I runners high yeah when I moved here in 2000 I, I know we don't have bandits anymore but that was how half the fun is like watching the bandits go and like you know our neighbors were heckling them and like fun heckling well you know and then people will be running in tutus and like well, they still have yeah those, so they just have a number now right they have a number and, and, then, <laughs> and then there's always Ro rosie ruiz who jumped on the tee right, and right. got off the tee in kenmore square and uh, right or, uh, that's that started all this chip tracking you yeah, know that well, that's good. when the chip tracking came <laughs> so out so we of also that. have alana cassidy yep uh, i know she's married to james who is platinum uh fitness oh platinum i didn't know that PT. silly goes there yeah, for yeah, her knee rehab for, yeah. yeah so she has done six marathons she's wow. going for her seventh wow. um she's run oh a total of 19 altogether this yep. is her seventh boston her best time 315 and 320 that's boston. impressive that is amazing that's impressive so she says this is the first time in 19 marathons that she's followed an official training plan yeah um usually she wings in and follows the alana plan which <laughs> consists of running when she can get the work and outs in between the kids stuff yeah and um get a 320 milers before race i have to say she has twins wow um so help me be the most fit and prepared to race even before my twins were born five years ago uh, so her workouts combine more fast miles and marathon pace miles into every run wow. so she says you know it, she's from minnesota she doesn't care about the weather right because yeah, she's from minnesota right. Minnesota's she a says it's new england i just embrace it yeah she doesn't do it alone so yep. she sticks with uh, the training plan with her husband james and friend karen mazio you yeah. know so the so everyone's that doing is it for wonderful. a different yeah. reason um, we got I love the energy around it. Like I love like driving through town, and everybody's like, I was driving through town, and they were taking pictures of it, and Aww. it was just really fun. But you know, we're really lucky that Amazing. we have it in our community, and it all starts here. You so know? I have one more, one more really cool <laughs> yep. story. You got about a minute left. Oh, okay, yes, we do. Okay, shot. yay! <laughs> so I have to. I just came across this. Jesse Carner is a member of Michael's Miracle Team. Ah. Uh, and this uh, has to do with respite center. Her quote is, last year in Natick, I was really tired, and I saw a woman wearing a black Michael's Miracle T-shirt. Uh. She waved me over. I'm going to get tears in my eyes. Uh. Asked if she could hug me and uh. thanked me for making her child's life possible. <gasps> oh, my so God. So raising the funds yeah. makes a difference. It does. Makes the money. Wow. Um, so some people run for fun. Rich Paquette. I'm pretty sure he's a teacher in our middle school. Yeah. <laughs> he's running, uh, and fundraising helped for the Hopkinton Education Foundation. We have some other people who are running for causes, but we're out of time. So thank you, go guys. So we've got to on a Monday. Good luck, runners. Yeah, and thank you, guys. Yep, thank and you. And we'll see you next week. We'll see you Thanks next week. Thanks for joining us.